Hello everyone and welcome to Decision Trees Explained for Beginners. I'm your instructor Kashif Murtaza from AI Sciences and in this video we are going to explain decision trees in particular we will talk about binary decision trees, the split criteria, the greedy choice properties and greedy algorithms, uh, the general decision tree structure and finally we will wrap up this video uh, with a hands-on in Python. <laughs> A binary tree is a structure or a graph like this in which each node has at max two children. So for example if you focus on this node these two are children of this node the left child and the right child. So if every node has at max two children then um, the tree is called binary. Um, one thing to notice that there may be certain nodes for not exactly two children it is still called binary. Uh, so for example there may be certain nodes for one child at all it still is called binary um, the restriction is that there should not exist any node with more than two children so that is called a binary tree what is a decision tree in decision tree each node represents a decision in most of the cases the decision is true or false and it makes sense if we have only two decisions um, then we have a binary tree because uh, if we if we are following a true decision then we are going into a one uh, in a in one branch and if we are following another decision we are going to another branch later uh, we will see the general setup of decision trees in which we can have multiple decisions and we can have decision trees that are no longer binary they can have multiple branches out so um, that's the binary decision tree but the most important part is how this binary decision tree or a decision tree in general is helpful in data science or in machine learning. Let's see that. So for that let's understand, uh, let's take an example of data and on the right hand side we have a decision tree drawn uh, that is learned from this data. Um, that may seem uh, kind of reverse in, in the first glance because we haven't learned, we haven't seen how a decision tree can be learned from the data, uh, how it is helpful for classification and I'm showing you a tree. Hold on, I will, I will explain each and everything in, uh, in detail and after, after, this, I, uh, after this explanation you will be able to understand how any decision tree can be, can be learned from data. So first let's understand this data. This data has um, five attributes. The first four attributes are the features and the fifth attribute is basically the class label. So that's a classification data and this no is uh, one class label and this yes is another class label. And we have four attributes or features, age, experience, strength, nationality. This is a, a data set for comedy shows. I have, this is a toy data set. I've just uh, copied this data set from W3 schools. This data set is available there. Actually, this graph is also available there. So we will, we will build this graph using our Python code today as well. So yeah, it's fancy. We are going to do that today. Uh, one thing to notice that to apply classification, uh, uh, to, to learn a decision tree for classification, even the decision tree works for regression, but that is, that is something we are not covering in this uh, video. Uh, we are just covering the classification uh, pipeline in this video. So the, the features on which the decision tree is uh, trained are mostly the categorical features because we have to decide, each node has to decide based on, based on uh, some set of categories. And in fact, all these decisions are based on the, those categories. If your uh, attributes are continuous, not categorical, uh, theoretically these decisions that we are going to make might be infinite. So even if the data is not uh, categorical, it has to be converted to categorical or, or we have to make its bins or, or I mean to, to keep the number of decisions um, countable or actually finite. So in this case, uh, I have taken the data that is already um, already categorical. The age values, the experience values, rank values, and nationality values can be thought of as categorical values. Further, uh, let's assume that UK has a code, let's say one, USA has a code, let's say two, and N has a code, let's say three. So we convert all these string data to, to numeric data. Let's say that's our conversion. 
and uh, um, let's let's see this uh, the CN3 on the right. Uh, right now, I will not ask you or, or I will recommend to not focus on this Gini index or GINI value. What is this value? We'll explain that later on, but let's now do not focus on this and focus on the rest. So in the very beginning, we have 13 samples. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and 13. 13 samples. So number of samples are 13, out of which six are no. So one, two, three, four, five, and six are no, and seven are yes. Uh, we do not know uh, what decision we have to take on on this um, on this particular um, on this particular node, on what feature and on what kind of question or query we have to decide. But let's say we decide based on if rank is less or equal to 6.5. If that is true, then we are going to classify everything as no. Let's see, uh, for example, uh, in this case, the rank is six um, and it is no. In this case, the rank is four and it is no. In this case, the rank is five and it is no. And in this case, the rank is five and it is no. Um, yeah, so in this case, the rank is greater than 6.5, it is still no, but Let's have a this decision. Whenever the rank is smaller or equal to 6.5, we are going to say a no. But if the rank is larger than 6.5, then some of the samples they agree to call no, some of the samples they agree to call yes. In that case, we may have another question or decision to make another note in the tree. Let's decide based on the nationality. Uh, we already have uh, told you that, let's say we have converted these uh, values to string values to uh, numeric values. So let's say the other decision is, uh, or question or query is, if the nationality is smaller or equal to 0 0.5. If true, you go there. If false, you go there. So think about this false branch. If false, that means uh, we are always going to say yes. So our, our output is yes. So think about now this. If rank is larger than 6.5 and the nationality is larger than 0 0.5, then always yes. And you can verify that from data. Uh, but in case of true, if nationality is smaller than 0 0.5, then we again have a mixed class. Um, a mixed, a mix up of classes is known as, uh, for example, if you see here, the classes are not mixed up. Um, all the, all the, I mean, all the labels are yes or all the labels are no. Uh, for example, see in this case, all the labels are yes. In this case, all the labels are no. So no uh, two different classes that are mixed up. But in this case, the two classes are mixed up. In this case, the two classes are mixed up. Whenever the two classes are mixed up, um, you keep on dividing that until the, mi the mixing thing is gone. So here the mixing thing is gone, that's a leaf still mixed, so we divide it further, the mixing thing is gone, and we are, we are done. So, um, and, and remember further that all these following a particular path, any path uh, has an and in between, and if rank is, if this is true, and this is true, and this is false. So whenever you are following a particular branch, you are applying an and there, and clause is there. Okay. Um, now, if we can have, for example, if we have a particular data point with age, let's say 74, and experience, let's say, um, experience, let's say seven, a rank, let's say, um, let's say rank is eight, and nationality, let's say, is one, whether we should call yes or no. Let's traverse this tree. Um, so first of all, we will see the rank. So rank is eight, which means we will go in this branch. Nationality is 0 0.5. Nationality is less than uh, 0 0.5. No. So we will go in this branch, which means we are going to say uh, a yes in there, just based on these two things. We never touched these things. Yeah. So now the question really is how to come up with a feature at the top. Which feature is the most important and should stay on the top? And based on that feature, what should be the query or the question that we should come up with? 
Well, here this, uh, this particular thing called genie will come up. So the general rule is you have to come up with a feature and based on that feature, you have to come up with a query or the decision that actually make the, make the classes as non-uniform as possible. So what do we mean by non-uniform classes? Um, a classes are more like uniform in the beginning. Um, the number of samples of class yes is similar kind of the number of samples of class um, no. But as you move on, you have to come up with a feature and come up with a come up with a query that breaks this non-uniformity. And this Gini value, or sometimes also known as the entropy value, actually is is zero if the if the classes are really skewed, horribly skewed. And this value is 0.5 or very close to 0.5 if the classes are much more uniform. So the algorithm works in the following way. You have to check all the features exhaustively and all their queries, possible queries exhaustively, and have to come up with the one feature along with its query that actually minimizes the uh, entropy or that actually maximizes the non-uniformity. Then recursively you have to move, for example, uh, then recursively you have to move, for example, down and there uh, from the remaining features you have to check uh, what feature and what threshold to select to, to increase the non-uniformity and so on. Gini is uh, one mayor for uh, randomness or non-uniformity, there are so many others. And that way you keep on moving down, down, down until you get all the uh, non-uniformity um, ensured for every leaf node. And that is something that you have to do with the data. Now, uh, one other thing that is very important to notice is that this approach is greedy, which means if you have decided a particular feature at the top, um, and then that is fixed, that is fixed that is no longer revisited. Once the rank is decided to be the most important feature, then rank is decided to be the most important feature. Afterwards, later on, you will not backtrack and go and change that feature. So that's a greedy approach and um, maybe suboptimal. You can, you can say that backtracking might be um, important. Maybe there is some other combination and check all the paths and stuff like that, but it makes it much more efficient, this greedy approach. And this algorithm indeed is called uh, greedy algorithm. And uh, finally, it is possible to, to come up with um, decision trees that are not binary. For example, you may, have, uh, you may have multiple categorical values. For example, let's say in this particular data, let's say we have uh, UK, USA, and N, and let's say nationality is the most important, uh, let's say nationality is the most important feature to stay on the top. So one decision might be based on, for example, nationality based on N, USA, or UK. These might be the decisions. And based on, if if the nationality, if the nationality is N, then what is the rank? Rank can have different values. And USA, if the nationality is USA, then what are, for example, another val values and so on. So. Um, in, in general settings, the decision tree uh, is not restricted to have, uh, is not restricted to be binary. It can be, it can have more than two decisions. And uh, it can have more than two decisions uh, everywhere, somewhere, sm some number of decisions, somewhere two decisions, somewhere three decisions, completely depends upon the number of categories of the features based on which you are, you are basically deciding. So uh, enough talking. Let's let's go to Python and see some see some running form. Uh, yeah. So let's see uh, Python code for it. And we will actually we are actually going to draw this um, we are actually going to draw this uh, graph that we have seen earlier. So let's import certain uh, categories. Uh, some um, some packages pandas we need for data tree for we need for our actually drawing a tree and getting a tree data. Uh, you have to install pi.plus. If that is not there, that is required for um, plotting um, the graphs. Uh, and then the CN tree classifier from sklearn and plt, uh, matplotlib plt for, for plotting. Uh, one more thing that is required, I will see you, I, I will tell you is that uh, graph viz, particularly if you are on Windows, you have to set the path very right. 
Okay, so next we load the data and print the data. So this is the data, uh, age, experience, rank, nationality, and go values. Let's map the values UK, let's map UK to zero and USA to one and N to two so that this column becomes, this particular column, uh, this nationality column becomes numeric. And also let's make this go column numeric by taking yes as one and no as zero. So let's map these values and come up with the numeric representation of all the data, even, even the class label. Now the features are age, experience, rank, and nationality. These are the features and the class label is uh, go. So let's pick that. Now let's build a classifier using the decision tree model available in scikit-learn and fit the classifier. Um, after that, so let me basically copy that. Let me just run this thing. It is there, it is done. And um, let me copy the rest of the stuff here. But before actually displaying the graph, let me just give you a prediction. So the decision tree has run, it is being there, that is some value on which I'm going to do the prediction. That is age, that is um, experience, the next value is experience, then we have a rank, then we have nationality, and we are going to predict the go value. That go value is uh, in this particular case. So in this case, this go value is zero. If for example, I change the six to eight, um, this go value become one. And uh, that's it, that's a classifier. But here I'm going to show you the, the actual graph that we have learned from data. And for that, we are going to export this, uh, export from graph is, we're going to use the pi dot plus for graphing. We will save the image and we will display the image. So let me show you what is going to happen. This is exactly what I have shown you there on slides. So this is the decision tree uh, in the start the randomness was very, very large. And as progressively, we move, as we move on progressively, the randomness becomes small, 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 and small. Yeah, so, yeah. So, um, that's it. Um, if you like our video, uh, please press the like button and uh, subscribe our channel and do share this with your friends. Uh, hope to see you next time.